Mark chapter 9, verse 30. And they departed thence and passed through Galilee, and he would not that any man should know it. And he's, you know, getting to the point right now, they've outright rejected him. And they only want him for one reason. They want him from healing, get rid of this devil, give us something to eat, but don't give us God. And that's what they want today. They want the popcorn. They want the hot dog. I said, you know, the, the, you know, hot dog. I see advertised barbecue and chicken. And what about the gospel? We're going to see that in a moment. Any man should know it. For he taught his disciples. Now watch this. This is today's church. He said unto them, that's why I love Mark. I'll run to Mark more than I run to Matthew. The Son of Man, that's Jesus, is delivered into the hands of men. And they shall kill him. And after he is killed, he shall rise from the third day. See the death? Of course, there's a burial and resurrection. You see the gospel. He's teaching them the gospel. Now, Mark 16, Lord willing, when we get there, Jesus said, well, go in all the world and preach the gospel. There it is. Long before Paul even says it. This is where Paul said, Jesus Christ will suffer and die according to scriptures. He'll be buried and he'll rise again the third day according to the scriptures. What's the scripture? What Jesus said right here. And Paul was not there. Or may not have been there. I mean, he was, he was one of the Pharisees. He could have been, but. But they understood not the saying and were afraid to ask him. They, they didn't understand it. You know, a lot of church don't understand it. Come up to the altar and say this prayer. Come to church. But watch, but watch, but watch. The gospel, they didn't understand it. And they didn't want to ask. And he came to Capernaum, being in the house, he asked him, said, what was it that you disputed among yourselves by the way? So the disciples are having a little a dispute. And you can't hide nothing from God. You can't hide nothing from Jesus. And Jesus, no, he wants, like Adam, he knew. He wants them to open their big mouth. He wants, Adam, tell me what you did. But they held their peace. For by the way, they had disputed among themselves who should be the greatest. Oh. Here's the gospel we don't understand. Now that he's told them the gospel, he tells them what happened. According to the scripture, out of the mouth of Jesus, out of the mouth of God, out of the mouth of the word of God, he says, listen, I'm going to die. I'm going to be buried. I'm going to resurrect on the third day. They don't understand it. They're in the way. They're talking, I'm the greatest. No, I'm the greatest. I got the greatest preacher. No, we got the greatest church. We got the greatest chili. We got the greatest amount of people. We had the more people here. We had the, the biggest BBS. We got the biggest camp meeting. We got the greatest, greatest, great. We are the great. We are the wonderful. How great our church is. How about going all the world and preaching the gospel? Well, you know, the great commission in Matthew, going all the world and teach. What about preach? They're saying how great we are. Revelation. Glad to see in church age. Revelation. Three. It's, it's, it's no different. And this, we're not going to read the whole thing, but Revelation 3.14, church of Glad to see That's the last church age. That's us. And excuse me one moment. Ooh. I need oxygen. I'm fighting health, so I apologize. All right, so there's a lot of the scene. That's us. Okay? Now, they're on the way. Jesus tells them the gospel. The gospel was preached during the Philadelphian church age of the King James Bible. They sent missionaries all out everywhere. Right? Land of the scene church. They're saying, I'm the great. No, I'm the great. You see, you see, you see me in villages I went to? Oh, do you see the, the, the person I resurrected from the dead? Oh, did you see all the, the hospital visits? Did you see? You know, that's what they were doing. Okay? 
Look at this. Look at verse 17. Revelation 3, 17. Thou sayest, I'm rich, increase with goods, and have need of nothing. I'm great. I'm wonderful. We got cloth pews. We got this air conditioning system and filter for COVID-19. We've got three pianos. Look at our nursery. Look how many Tootsie Rolls the kids got on, on, on their memory verses. There's no different. What about the gospel? If you put more effort into the gospel than you did chicken, fellowship, and all the other nonsense in the church today, this world will change. That's the revival. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not your hamburgers, hot dogs, barbecues, movies. Your Sunday school is usually about, about 45 minutes and you have 15 minutes of, of nonsense. Back to Mark. So it's no different. Jesus tells them the Gospels. They don't understand. But oh, how great they're talking about themselves. Take any church today. And go find out what are they proclaiming. Are they proclaiming the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus? Or are they proclaiming who should be the greatest? I'm telling you, most of the people that arrive to see in church days, I said most, not all, they're, they're not going to compete with those of the Philadelphia church age. Or those of the book of Acts. You see, they want the book of Acts. They want the 5,000 to be added to the church. They want the 3,000 added to the church. But the, the, the church in Acts didn't have the world. The world hated the, the, the Christians in Acts. The world loves the church. You got to preach the gospel. Because Jesus is the greatest, not your church. And he sat down and called the twelve. See, it's all the twelve they were saying the greatest. And says unto them. If any man desire to be first, that's exactly what they wanted. So you've got churches out there, the first Baptist church. That's kind of funny because I've seen like eight first Baptist churches. How do you have eight, nine, ten, I don't know, what, a hundred first Baptist churches? And I've been to the first Baptist church in the United States of America, and it's not Roger Williams in, in Providence, Connecticut. I have I have been to, and there are pictures on my Facebook of the first Baptist church in Rhode Island, and I forget the name of the city. That's the first Baptist church, and believe me, it ain't Southern Baptist. At least it wasn't Southern Baptist. I don't know what it is today. It didn't play bluegrass music. But you got churches out there. We're the first Baptist. We're the first Baptist. We're the first Baptist. My grandmother grew up. I didn't know. My grandmother grew up in the first Baptist church of New London, Connecticut. I knew there was a first Baptist church in Waterford, Connecticut. There's a First Baptist Church in Daytona. You can't be the first, second, third, and third, fifth, seven, eight, no, twenty, and still be the first. And there's something screwing. That's almost just as bad as saying Jesus died on Friday, three days and three nights later, he arose from the grave on, on Easter Sunday. One, two, it don't fit. 
There's something wrong with, with one of the first things. Uh, say, how do I know my church is right? How do I know my religion is right? If it can't do math. The same shall be last of all. And the servant of all. And Jesus will go in, in the Gospel of John with the foot washing. So there are churches out there, they have a foot washing ordinance, and they just do it. It's an ordinance, it's something we always done, it's a tradition. Without looking at the fact is, you know, it's it's servitude. Sometimes, let me give you an example. The first and last. Sometimes, you know, you'd be saying, oh, after church, I, I think we're going to go to this restaurant. Oh, I, I, oh, I want that. I want that meal. Oh, I'm starving for that meal. And you got a missionary there, and, and he's got a cause, and he's got a good thing. He, he's King James Bible, and it's a great ministry. And God says, take that last money you have in your pocket that you want to filthy your mouth on. You want to be a glutton, and you want to covet that meal. You take that money out of your pocket, and you put it in that plate. You're putting that missionary first. You're putting the work of God first. And we'll deal with your mouth and the covet covetousness and the gluttony. We'll deal with that later. He took a child and set, the, set him in the midst of them. And when he had taken his arms, he said unto him, Now imagine, here's the twelve disciples. Now he put this child right in front of him. Everybody can see in the midst. Whosoever, whosoever shall receive one of these children in my name. How you with the children? What are you doing with the children? Now listen, now listen, listen. Don't give me this VVS. Don't give me this, this modern Sunday school movement because it's all the devil. That kid does not learn memory verses for God. He learns memory verses so he can get a Tootsie Roll. So he can brag to his other, uh, look how many I learned. Tom Sawyer sold and bought uh, uh, ribbons for memory verses so he can impress, I forgot what the girl's name was, and gave the, the, the Sunday school teacher a heart attack when he comes up there with all those ribbons. He didn't earn them. He just wanted the girl. BBS, really, come on. 15 minutes yard, yard play, playground, 10 minutes food and cookies and milk, and 15, 10 minutes of, okay, we, we got to do the, you know, uh, we got to do the attendance before and after the thing. Uh, five minutes, make sure you get home with the right parent. And everyone settle down for two minutes. We got 25 minutes of playing games, the red team and the blue team, which I don't know why we got competition in the church. And then you got the five minute, seven minute Bible. Hey, we had a Bible. And the kids walk away today. They don't know anything about Jesus. I wonder how many kids today in any church, any denomination, if they know what the gospel is. Or did they know, come to church? Jesus said the gospel, and they're all, oh, look how great I am. Look, we got the greatest, we got the greatest group. We got the greatest revival coming. We got the greatest visitation preacher. We got the greatest piano player. We got the greatest red of, of the pews. We got the greatest blue carpet. Our youth director can swallow the most goldfish. We got the greatest games. We got the greatest playground. 
What about the gospel? Or does Jesus have to come to the church, put a little child on men? Hey, what about this little child? In my name, not your pastor's name, and not your church name, not your revival name, not your denomination, not your church name. In my name. Whosoever receive one of such child in my name receiveth me. There's a great responsibility for the children of the parents. There's a great responsibility of the children. You say, how do you know that the America is, is no more a biblical nation? Look at the children. We come to a point in, in America today in 2023, that I don't even know what sex I am. That if a boy goes to school, his shirt says there's only two genders, go home and change your shirt. You know what I would say to that, to that teacher, that whoever it was? Go to the institute, lock yourself out, and don't come out again if you think that. You pervert! But are the parents, what are, what are the Christian parents, what is the church is saying to the world about this nonsense? They're teaching all the children and not teaching the children. Okay, let's get back to the very thing. Do the children of the Baptist church know the gospel in the name of Jesus? Or do they know Patch to Pirate? Little Susie in her boat. The talking banana. The talking carrot. The talking preaching tomato. Harry in his magic wand. Or any other fiction. Books are Christian. If there is an oxymoron I found in one of the bookstores in Daytona Beach. Christian fiction. That's an oxymoron. That's intelligent moron. Do you go out and witness for your church name, your pastor's name, your revival name, your guest preacher, guest musician name, or do you go in the name of Jesus? When I used to street preach before I got ill, I never mentioned the name of church and I had a pastor get mad at me. I ain't here for your church. I ain't here for no church. And I know some great representatives of street preaching. They had the same attitude. We're not there for the church. We're there for Jesus. We're there for the gospel. And the only way we'll talk to church for you, if you get saved, you are saved. If you're not saved, we're not lighting you. The world may say all are welcome. But that sign is not hanging over New Jerusalem. And I feel a sneeze coming, so forgive me. So whosoever, and recognize that word, whosoever, whosoever, for God so loved the world that whosoever, whosoever's name was not found written in the land of the book of life, shall receive me, receiveth not me, for him that sent me. And the Jehovah Witnesses will say, well, Jesus never said he was God. How come they didn't get the gospel? Because they had their mind on great. Who's the greatest? 
How come the churches today don't have the God? They don't go and re preach and witness the gospel. They don't tell people because they don't read their Bible. They don't pray and they have no idea themselves. All the preacher does is say, invite them to church. Invite them to church. Hey, we're having a Write your family and friends out. We're going to have corn on the cob. Invite, invite your co-workers out. We're going to have a fireside something. Come on out. We're going to, we're going to get a dunking booth and we're going to dunk the preacher. Oh, you're going to rebaptize the preacher. I'm telling you things that, that have been in churches that I've been in ever since Connecticut. Come on into our church. We're going to have an upside down clown. What happened to the, the weekly prayer meeting? It's not a prayer meeting no more. I, when I was first saved, there was a church, weekly prayer. We, okay, raised our hands and said, and we prayed. And then we had a 15-minute Bible lesson. Hour and a half, we sang three songs, we prayed. I mean, we, 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 we raised our hand. We said, pray for my aunt, pray for my mom, pray for my cousin, pray for Uncle Joe, pray. And we, okay, is that it? Uh, everybody go off to where do you want to go? Stay where you are. Come to the altar wherever you are. Go. And everybody went off. And then when we felt led by the Holy Spirit, we prayed. And then when it seemed like it was the last prayer, no one else was going to say anything, the preacher would pray. And we get back to our seats, open our Bible, and we have a 15-minute Bible study. We had more time for prayer than we had for singing. We had more time for prayer than we had in the Bible. And then when, 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 when we had visitation, the three people that would go visitation went for the gospel, not about the church. Then things began to change. That church ain't what it is today. My first church I was in, me and my wife, Lisa, we were, we were engaged to get married. And it was a couple of months before we were going to get married, the date and all that. And the, and the, the pastor, he called, we called him brother. We didn't call him pastor. He called Lisa and I into the office. He said, I got to talk with you two. I said, okay, what? what's going on? He says, I'm not going to marry you two. You know, I would be that change. I mean, we got all the plan. Everything's going to be at this church, and why? There's a charge, of, and there were charges by the people. You know, every, uh, there's some gross sin, or are we de church? Well, what's going on? Because no. So why aren't you going to marry us? You and Lisa don't come to the fellowships. What? We're here, son we're here in Sunday school, yeah. We're here for Sunday service, yeah. We're here for Sunday night, Sunday evening Bible when when there is one. Well, yeah, we're here Wednesday night, yeah. We give tithes and offerings, yeah. But where you give up Sunday night so we can have fun and all that, we're not there. No, you go home. Lisa told me one thing. She says, and she was active church, did nursing and all. She says, I'm going to ask you something. I said, what? I was getting ready for the ministry, going to school. She says, I want you, next time we have this fellowship thing, because we were going to the fellowship, so we can get married by this guy. She says, I want you to notice something. I said, okay. So the next one came along Sunday morning. And she, goes, she goes, look around. I looked around. And then we had the fellowship afterwards, the follow. You know, they broke up all, you know, you had more barbecue pits and, and you know, the Bibles were skinned across the, the basketball court. And she says, look around. I said, what's up? She says, you know, is there more people here for the fellowship than there were in the church service? I looked around and says, yeah. She told me another time, another church. She says, you know. She said, you know, my wife, she was my wife then, 
She loved the Lord. She goes, I, I'm not going to do nursery no more. I said, why? What's wrong? Kids out of hand? They are, but she said, no. She says, I'm getting tired of the women and the nurse. They turn off the preacher's speaker, and they sit there and start gossiping. That's a Baptist church. I was a Sunday school teacher in a church. First time ever, first time Sunday school. And I was giving the kids Sunday school lessons. Talk about children. And I gave them a Sunday verse, Sunday verse, uh, gave them a scripture verse, and, and I said, by the, by the fourth Sunday of the month, I'd like to have you kids tell me. Now, Mr. Hayward didn't have no surprise, no prizes or anything. You were just to learn the memory verses because you wanted to. So we went two months and no one knew the Bible verses, except for my son. So I came across the month. I wrote them on a piece of paper, typed them on a piece of paper, and I said, you're to have your mother or father sign this paper to acknowledge you are getting these Bible verses and you're to learn them. Kids took the paper. The following Wednesday, Pastor says, I gotta talk to you Sunday. I said, okay. I'll be here. Went to church early, called in his office. He says, You can't be the Sunday school teacher no more. I said, Well, what happened? Well, you gotta call your parents quite a few parents upset by that by that that stunt that you did. I said, Pastor, all I'm trying to do is make sure the kids learn their memory verse. Well, we're not gonna have that no more. So the pastor called in his best friend and his wife. Meanwhile, his best friend come to find out he has, has been having an adulterous love affair with another woman. Is it in the name of Jesus or is it the name of you or the name of your church? Because I see on Facebook, I see... I, I see these things, you know, we're going to have a springtime revival. We're going to have uh, 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 this. We're going to have that. We're going to have hot dogs. We're going to have cake. We're going to have uh, chili cook off. And look at the face of these preachers. Look at the face, face of this preacher. Look at this family that's going to sing for us. Look at this missionary. Look at their pictures. Look at the title of our church. Look at the address of our church. But look at no scripture and no Jesus. It used to be a man associated with, with my institute, a pastor of a church and of his own institute, would say, in the, and this guy was born in early, early in age, he would say, you know what it used to be that on the church signs would say the Lord Jesus Christ. Then Lord offended them. So they kicked off the Lord and just put Jesus Christ. And then, you know, Christ got in the way. So they just removed the Christ and put Jesus. Today we're in the church age, you just take Jesus out of it. And you're in the lives to see in church age where Jesus is not inside the church, Satan is. And you got to understand, listen, what we're looking at today is the very fact is the church is absent of the gospel, but they're all about who's the greatest. And you'll get your pastor, may, your, may be your pastor, he will go off to a pastor's conference, and they will, I know a pastor went off at a conference almost every other week, and they will go and they will show their tally sheet. You, you see, while you're sitting there, the pastor's wife or somebody is in the back row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I had a church where the pastor invited, every year he invited people over his house. They had a Christmas meal. And I went with my wife and my children. And I, the ushers were at the door to greet us. Oh, that was nice. And I heard the second usher go, 56, 57, 58, 59. I was being counted for the pastor's Christmas dinner. And they would record that down, and they would go to their pastor's conference and say, hey, we had a Christmas dinner at our house. Yeah? 72 people showed up.
Well, we had a special group came in. 103 came in. 42 got saved. 36 came to the altar. Only four fell asleep. One did not have his eyes closed. That's me. All heads bowed and all eyes closed. Not mine. I see that hand. Where? I've been to churches like that. Where? Where's that hand? You miss the gospel. How great. Uh, see, the, the hymn is, How Great Thou Art. The Baptist church has changed it today. It's how great we are. How great I am. How great our church is. How great our pastor is. We are in the tabernacle Baptist church. Oh, excuse me. There's only one tabernacle. There was only one temple in the Bible. Now you have taken the temple of the body of Christ and made it a building again. We're not under the law. Your title is. I had a pastor tell me one day, touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm. I thought we were, I thought there were no prophets. You got to do the gospel. When we come to the end of Mark, chapter 16, you're going to hear Jesus say, go in all the world and preach the gospel. You know why they, you know, you know why they quote Matthew? Because it says, teach all nations. Even the preachers don't even want to preach today. They, they nicely teach. Oh, just put the butter on the bread for Jesus. Stolly comes along and knocks the bread, or, bread and the butter out of your hands on the ground. He's loud. He's too loud. And they told him, to be, you're too loud. You haven't heard the cars? You haven't heard the motorcycles? You haven't heard the racetrack? What's wrong? How come everything else can be loud but not the preacher? Because our preacher doesn't do. And you ain't got a preacher. You got a panty lace. 